All right, my name is Brian Vickery, and this, I think, is the third year that I've come to talk to fifth grade class about art and presenting. In fact, uh, based upon that, I think the first time I did it, I taught both second and fifth graders. So if you guys were in second grade at that time, you may have actually been there when I did that presentation as well. But anyway, I have to give a lot of presentations. And so as a result, they decided to bring people into ministry, and we get to talk to you about how we present before you get ready to do your big project. So, again, my name is Brian Vickery. I'm with a company called Mantis, and we do software development, business intelligence. We do all kinds of reports and dashboards, and we even pay attention to social media. So if you start talking on Twitter, when you get to Twitter, or like Facebook, if you ever get one of those accounts, how many people have Facebook? Ooh, that is young to be having Facebook. But either way, be on your best behavior there, because somebody is watching what you're doing there as well. But today, I am going to be talking to you about the art of presenting. So let me get the... This thing is... Okay. Um, so, to, and we're going to even talk about the not cooperating part as well. But what I wanted to do is we're going to have a slide deck here, and I'm going to go through some basic things about a slide deck that you can do but what we don't want to do is, remember, at one point in time, I had nothing, right? Okay, I was trying to make that projector work, and if that projector didn't work, and I was counting on a presentation to basically do the presentation for me, I would have been in a lot of trouble. So, rule number one, know your content. Know what you're going to talk about, because if that projector's not there, then you're going to have to become a storyteller. And we're going to talk about that. We want you to be more of a storyteller, not an lecturer, okay? Now... Looking at the slide deck, what's your presentation going to be about, first of all? So somebody give me an idea. What's your first presentation going to be? Yes, ma'am. Introduction. What is it? Introduction. Oh, that's what this one is. That's what we're going to talk what about. What is well, your, your project first project about? When you present your first project-based thing to a solar family. system? What is your presentation? Oh, it's about, the, so we either get to choose the Jamestown fort or the ship that they used to sail across the ocean. And what we have to do is we research about it and see if we can find improvements to make like people live longer. Oh, so actually live on that ship and actually survive so that yeah. they get to their destination. Okay, okay, so just improving the quality of life so people can live longer. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, Okay, good, good. So we go through, I may be asking you questions about that presentation, but I want you to keep that presentation in mind as we go through this and imagine what you would put on some of these slides. Okay? So the first thing we did is when I came in here, I introduced myself. Okay, I can't just walk in off the street because you don't know who I am. I'm a complete stranger. So I want to go ahead and come in here and introduce myself and then give you the purpose of the presentation. The purpose of the presentation in this case is either to talk about the ships themselves or the forts and how can we improve the quality of life and maybe the sanitary conditions and all that so that people can live longer and be safe, okay, and get to their destinations. At the end, we're going to have questions and answers. So you're probably going to be presenting some of your solutions, but at some point in time, you want feedback from the audience, okay? You want them to ask their questions. And really, if you can get them to ask questions throughout and you ask them questions, now you know they're engaged and not falling asleep, okay? <laughs> so, and then finally, you want to leave information for the follow-up with the Q&A. All right, so you just presented some great ideas, but maybe not every question gets asked right there in that session. So you want to make sure that it's like, okay, well, you can contact my teacher uh, with any of your further questions, and I'll get back with you on that. Okay, your teacher gets to act like your secretary for this. Okay, now, throughout this, you'll also notice at the top right here, I'm kind of giving you an idea, the audience, where we are in the presentation. So right now, I'm just presenting an agenda, and that's what I talked about. But as we go through to the next one, you know, I want to give a little bit more introduction back to who I am. So I'm getting ready to give you ideas, okay? Well, what makes me qualified to give you ideas? Okay, again, I can be the guy off the street. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this, this is who I, who I am, the person, but 
that education and that experience, this is what's going to allow me to be qualified to tell you about changes that you should make in your design to improve the quality of life for your people. Okay? So, with this and this, you know, you, you may even say, hey, I'm a researcher on, on Google Sketchpad, and I get out there and I, and I come up with ideas, this is something I do frequently, and I'm here to present great ideas to you. And then, you know, here for hobbies, again, not really important for you here, but if you were giving a presentation to a different audience, you might want to give people a little bit of a glimpse of what you like to do outside of your daily job. Okay, so that so what makes you different than the other three guys that are going to come give their presentations on how to make the ships better on the fourth boat? Okay, so you want to make them remember you versus necessarily your competition. So who are you? And notice again, I changed this up here because I talked about the introductions. Now, purpose of the presentation. Is that a good one? No. Okay, why is it not a good one? Yes, ma'am. Right. Now, but does it just say blah 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 blah? No. 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 What is it? What else does it say? Right. So important point got missed in all the blah blahs. Okay. Probably really want to make sure they see this one. It's that important. Point of Earth. Shaking significance. And it got lost in the garbage. Okay? It got lost in all the blah blahs. And then right here, greatest thing since sliced bread. How many people eat lunch? You'd say, sliced bread's a cool thing, right? Okay? Sliced bread's a cool thing. I was getting ready to present how to slice bread, and guess what? Nobody saw it. Greatest thing since sliced bread, nobody saw it. It got lost in there. If I don't get this point across, I'll probably be fine. Okay, so I've got these great ideas, but if I don't get my point across, they're not going to hear, they're not going to invest, they're not going to make the choice with the solutions that I give them, they're going to go to my competition. Okay, and you're going to have competition. When you're building ships or building forts. Guess what? Joe's Fort Supply was building forts also. He wants the business too. So, make sure you get your points across. How do you get your points across? Only use three to four of these bullet points. Okay? Don't throw a lot of words in. To tell you the truth, this is actually too many words also. Okay? You need to keep it even more simple than this. So just use three to four points. If you've got to have a little bit more detail about the wood you're going to choose or the way you're going to do sanitation on a ship or something, maybe you indent it. But only use three or four words here to prompt their memory. The rest of the time, use your voice. Okay? Again, you're telling a story. And we're going to get to the different ways you can tell the story depending on what your audience is. A little bit. Use a font and a type that's easy to read. Okay? Whenever, okay, whenever you go into a, a presentation or a Word document, how many of you have clicked on a font to see all the little cool fonts you can choose for your paper? Okay? How many of you choose the, chose the weird font? How many of you turned it in? Good choice. Okay, so you can look at the weird font, you can print it out, you're like, now nah, that was pretty cool. But I would advise you to not turn it in because your teachers will go blind, okay, if they're trying to read this. It's very difficult to read. You don't want to, them to get distracted by something like this. You want them to see your ideas, all right? So pick a simple font, color, and size so that people can read it. Now, use white space and color to emphasize your critical points. You know, on our previous slide, it was just blah, 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 all right? And there was absolutely no space whatsoever. There was no color. It was all the same color. So you can say things like this. This is important. But boom, this is the really important message I want to convey on the slide. Okay, this is the most important part. So mix in color, mix in space. We call it white space, but in this case it's not white, of course. But mix in space, separate it from everything else. So that's the thing that they remember from what a presentation is. Okay, here we go. How many people do uh, things like this with their slide deck? Okay, animation can be pretty cool, can't it? Especially those of you that use a Macintosh. See, you're, you're making me have computer envy whenever you have your Macintosh because you can do things I can't. Okay, here we go again. Wow, this is so many busy options. By the way, you get like my age and all that, that is busy. Wow, that was awesome. Okay, things are blowing up. Okay, that's
that's awesome, that right? Hurts. This isn't a Die Hard movie. Though. This is a presentation. We're trying to get things going with, with making things better for people. So consider your audience before going overboard at the animation. Notice I still had animation there because I did want to draw their attention to it, but it just kind of floated down. Just very simple. So sometimes the principle, keep it simple, is the best approach. Okay? If you were going to present to other kids, blow things up. Okay? Make things crazy. Use crazy fonts. Do that kind of thing. When you're getting ready to present to a panel of business leaders, right? You've got to keep it kind of professional when you do that. All right. Be interactive and energetic. Have I been energetic enough so far? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I didn't talk in a monotone. In fact, it's very difficult for me to even pretend to talk in a monotone. Who can talk in a monotone? Do you know what a monotone is? Say different words to say it all at the same level. Okay, so tell me your name and what grade you're in. Just like this. I'm in I'm in See, even, she, even then, she still had voice inflection, right? Say it, just sound like a robot. Yes, sir. Even then, you still have voice inflection. See, you guys can be fantastic presenters. Yes, ma'am. I'm and I'm and I don't think it's hard. It is, isn't it? It's like, hi, I'm Ryan Vickery. I'm here to present today. Okay? It's just different. You just stay nice and flat like that. Don't ever do that. Okay? Be energetic. Be interactive. Notice I've already asked you a number of questions, and then sometimes I have to break down the monotone people. Okay, let's refocus. Voices off. Okay? Make eye contact and speak clearly. Have I tried to make eye contact with the whole room? Yeah. Okay, because if I'm over here, I don't want you snoozing. Okay, so if I'm over here all the time, you might be like, hey, I can catch a little shit out of here. Nobody will notice. So, make sure you engage everybody in the room. Use anecdotes, examples, and statistics without going overboard. So, as you've done your studies about your ship or about your forts, have you looked at how many people, what the mortality rate is, how many people have died as a result, or, or you know, the long journey over, how many people have died? I've got somebody back here saying she has. She's Seven like, out of ten. Seven out of Well, I mean, there was more than that, like, but like 70 people died out of like 100. Okay, that's... Alarming, right? So here we go. Use examples and statistics. We're going to get to something again talking about the difference between German Shepherds and gold medals. But that is a case of a German Shepherd thing. You're like, if you do not go with our design, 70 out of 100 people are going to die on this trip. Do you want that? It could be your son. It could be your daughter. It could be your wife. It could be your husband. You're kind of putting a little bit of fear in them. Okay? Because you're getting ready to present a great idea to them on how that no longer has to be the case. You're going to get a safer solution. Do you have a question? Oh, okay. Let us show you that. All right? What is this right here? A what? Picture. A picture. It's worth a thousand words. All right? How many of you, have they started the presentation, Chad? Actually, they have do? not started their presentation. They have been started their research. So they, okay. This is before they even get to this point. So we okay. want them, when they get to the presentation, they know what they need to do. Okay, include pictures to the route, okay? You have pictures worth a thousand words. Include something that's going to relate to what you're thinking. It can be a ship, and it can be a ship before, and it can be a ship after. It can be a fort before, it can be a fort after, all right? But you're wanting to include those types of pictures because people are visual. They tend to see things. Yes, some people are auditory. They want to be able to hear what you're saying. But a lot of people, especially guys, are visual. They want to see what's up there on the screen. Understand the power of a question. So, I've already asked you a number of times your input, okay? One, and so, so why, first of all, do we ask the question? It keeps the audience engaged, all right? Some of you, like, especially when I did a monotone thing, everybody wanted a shot at that because you wanted to beat the other guy. So, oh, I can be monotone. All right? So, you want to keep the audience engaged throughout the presentation. They're paying attention to you. You let the audience know that their opinion matters. All right? If I'm presenting something, then I want more input from you because your opinion does matter and it may color how I go about the rest of my presentation. It provides more insight into the audience and what your viewpoints are. Okay? A lot of times, I'll walk in, the last time I walked in here, uh, you know, different people were wearing, somebody's wearing like a 
Green Bay Packers shirt, which I feel really sorry for you based upon that game last night. All right, but I was able to, I was able to establish an emotional connection with that Green Bay Packer fan. It's like, dude, I'm sorry that happened to you. You got robbed by the officials. But you know what? I just made a fan out in the audience. That fan is going to pay a little bit more attention to me and is going to be a little bit more receptive to what I have to say because I've established an emotional connection with it. Okay? It can be the same thing. I can be like, what's your favorite college right now? Pink. Blue. 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 I said college and I got pink and blue. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I am not enunciating. Go be See you, Boulder? Okay, I got you. See you. See you, Boulder. D, from University of Texas. <laughs> okay, now. Okay, but the thing is, see, what is this? I ask you a question, your opinion matters, and oh, by the way, you're passionate about the colleges that you follow. Your energy just went up. Each of you wanted to sound out, and some of you are more proud. Does anybody know what the, the sign is for their college? See, this is Cooking Horns. This is the University of Texas. I don't know. Last year, at the University of Texas. University of Texas. <laughs> What's the Boulder one? What's CU Boulder? Oh, Buffalo. It's Buffalo. It's Buffaloes, but I don't even know what they do. Okay. It looks like they want it. Okay. All right. Now, try not to ask a question that has a simple yes or no. If I say, do you like football? No. no. Yes. 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 Yes or no, I really haven't learned much. Okay? You know, I, I get a general consensus from you, but I haven't learned here as much as I say, what's your favorite football team? Tennessee. Tennessee. Tennessee yes, Titans? Broncos. Broncos. Tennessee Volunteers. Okay. So now, as I'm going through, it's not enough that I know that this person likes football. I know which team he likes. Okay? So I can refer to that. I can say, what's your favorite hobby? What do you do for a hobby? Yes, sir. Um, uh, I play football. You play? Somebody give me something besides so football. <laughs> oh. Yes, ma'am. Soccer. Okay, so now I got a soccer player. Any hobby, it doesn't have to be a sport. I do rugby. You do rugby? That's a sport. That's a good sport. <laughs> okay, yes, ma'am. Arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. What kind of arts and crafts? Painting. Painting. Okay, so now I know I have a painter. What's your favorite painter? Daniel. Daniel. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a little bit different. I'm remembering guy myself. Okay? But. Anyway, so each time I ask this, I'm getting more and more intelligence about you. I'm understanding my audience better, and oh, by the way, you know that I care about what you say. Okay, so I may circle back around, and if I reference, reference painting or the analogy, I may go back and look at you for that. Okay, finally, dress the part. I do not wear this every day. I dressed up for you. Okay, now, you're getting ready to give a presentation to business leaders. If you're going to do that, generally the rule is you want to imagine what that person's going to wear and try to one-up them just a little bit, okay? okay? So, for example, if I'm going to be presenting to business leaders, I can imagine they're going to come in possibly with a suit. Since they're coming to the, to the school to hear you talk, more than likely they're going to be wearing dress slacks and a dress shirt, okay? So you want to one-up them. So if I wear this without a tie, okay? then I know that I'm probably going to one-up them. In fact, I probably could have gotten by with just slacks and a sport jacket. <laughs> now, if I was walking in and I wanted to teach uh, a carpenter, or if I was walking out to a farm and I wanted to convince them to buy a new tractor, am I going to go out wearing a suit? No. 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 Do you know why? Because they get dirty. Your stuff. Yes, well, no, thank I'm saying that's a very good point. So, besides, I thought somebody was going to say something, besides me possibly stepping in something in my nice shoes, which I don't really want to do, you're right. There will be such a big difference between the way I'm dressed and the way that they're dressed and are accustomed to dressing, we will not relate. In fact, they may not like me right out of the shoes because they're like, who do you think you are? Okay? So, know your audience and then dress the part appropriate to your audience. So, what do you expect to wear for a bunch of business leaders? First of all, ladies. Dress. Dress is good. Skirt. 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 Yep, very nice top. Okay, sweater. A nice pants. That's fine. Wearing boots are, are perfectly fine. Maybe a ribbon in your hair. 
Now, one very important point there is you definitely want your hair pulled back. Guy or girl, because I know some guys have long hair as well. When you're getting ready to give a presentation to business leaders, I don't even care if they're cool business leaders, like you're somebody who's getting ready to present the iPhone 5. Pull your hair back. People need to see your face. They need to see your expressions. You need to be professional. Okay, this is where you're getting your practice, being professional. <laughs> so, what does I have to go to? It does not look like that. Okay. <laughs> It's a picture from Castaway, which is like twice your age away, right? I think it was way back when. But anyway, don't look like that. Okay. Okay? Uh, Keep your hair pulled back from your eyes. Be well groomed. Yeah. Trim your beard, guys. Okay? You, know? you might have yeah. a little bit of trouble. Make sure you get that trimmed out. <laughs> don't look like that guy. This is the same guy. walk in the boardroom and sell a home drink with people living in Arizona. All right? Golden Gate's not in Arizona. Right? Yes. Golden Gate, Golden Gate is in San Francisco. Good answer. Okay? Look like this. Okay? If you're, if you're getting... Because, again, we're talking about making ships better or making ports better. So you have paid attention. I've listened to what you're doing so I can relate to you about your topic. All right? So I'm going in because I need you to invest in my solution. I need to look comfortable. I need to look stable. I need to look like a pillar of the earth so that you're willing to give me your time and your money so I can make the ships and the ports better. Okay? Understand what makes your audience tick. We talked about German shepherds and gold medals. So here's the deal. Some people, and, I, and really a cool exercise is to see who you are. Do you tend to run away from German shepherds, or do you tend to run towards gold medals? So we talked before about 70 out of 100 people dying on voyage. Okay, death. German shepherd coming at you. Hang on, hang on. Death, pain, bite. Okay. So when you run away from German shepherds, you fear the result. So you give them alarming statistics. When we talked about the beetle kill, okay. I would have, you could have photographs of all the trees that are dead in what is a beautiful state, okay? And you can say, if you do not do this, the entire state will look like this. We will lose everything that way. We need to address this issue. But you are instilling a little bit of fear in them before you get the solution, all right? So, people make decisions out of fear because they want to avoid pain, all right? Communicate using the alarming statistics, all right? You're going to tell them a little bit later how to ease their pain. Now, some people like to run towards gold medals, all right? Somebody wants to be, I want to be the rugby champion, okay? I want to win the art contest. Did anybody realize what I'm doing here? Yeah. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. I'm relating to the audience because I know that person likes rugby and that person likes painting, okay? So... Run towards gold medals. Talk about winning awards. All right, you're going to have the coolest ship or port around. Indians going to be walking by like saying, "Holy cow, will you check that out? My TP is no more fun." Yeah. All right, so the fort is the cool thing. That's going to be the coolest thing on the block. It's going to be the only thing on the block, but it's going to be really cool. Okay, so communicate with these people. Show them how much money they're going to make. How many awards they're going to win? All right, if somebody was uh, an art teacher. Okay, so, so they're actually doing that. Then they want to show, or if you're a piano instructor, you want to show how many people have won medals by coming to you as their instructor. Okay, that way when you see, you can relate to that. You desire medals like those guys did. And there will be pictures of the kids that won the medals. You're like, I could be that person. All right, so that is running towards gold medals. All right, here's just an example. I told you I do software development, business intelligence, stuff like that. I look at things like this room, and I see the relationships of tables to each other, people to tables, doors, colors, all the attributes of things, all right? So what I do is I model that. Now, 
This looks kind of complex. Lines going everywhere, a bunch of words and stuff like that. So instead, we don't want that. Notice I used a little bit of animation, but not overpowering animation. Nothing blew up. And something just faded in with my bullet points. Okay? Kept it simple. Nothing blew up. Nothing blows. Anything like that. All right? But now I present my ideas with just a few bullet points. Notice I used the white background to my advantage. Okay? So the words are clearly simple. And that's it for the presentation. So, let's get to some questions. Who has questions? Talk, think about art or presenting. Yes, ma'am. Um, what, what if you didn't have any questions? What if you memorized the data cells and the load and you don't have them on the screen but you got it during the presentation because you got the space? It's good to have parts. Okay, so uh, now, in the world of slide decks, all right, now if you notice, I didn't have this, it originally started, it was based on you, okay? That really wouldn't help things much because some of you would have been distracted by the screen and I wouldn't have been able to use it as a prompt, okay? So when I have a presentation like this, I don't necessarily need to have cards, and the advantage of me not having cards is that when I looked, I looked here. So my eyes are still up, okay? It's okay to have cards. You're not going to have electronics available like a laptop, or you're going to be showing something else and referencing your notes. It's okay to have those cards. Just don't write it word for word. Because if you write it word for word, you'll look down and you'll get caught up in the story. Okay? And you'll start reading right from the cards. So instead, just like we had the bullet points, you know, way back here, keep it to the bullet points. And even on your cards, use white space. All right? Use space so that if you look up the top, when you look down, you don't have to go, oh, my God, again. Okay? So keep it short. Three to four words per point. Memorize everything, but use the three to four words that's going to help you remember. Ah, yeah. You need to hit that point. Okay? Any other questions? Surely you have other questions. First of all, let me go ahead and get take a poll in the room. How many people, be honest, it's okay to have fear, by the way. All right, how many people feel like they run away from things that cause them pain? Okay, so like maybe you didn't play a sport because you knew it was going to hurt. Okay. How many people run for gold medals? They want to have the best teacher so they can win awards, or they want to have the best coach so they can win championships. Okay, so look at the audience, see how they tend to act. And, and you get to see the people here all the time. So if you were doing peer, uh, presentation, so you get ready to present to your class. You're getting an idea now which ones get alarmed and freak out when things aren't so great, and how many people are the who charge forward and they want to win all the awards. So know your audience. Now, speaking of that, you have ample opportunity to do practice presentations. Practicing in front of a mirror is a good thing. Now, if you notice, I use my hands a lot, and if you actually go to uh, formal classes on presentations, this is somewhat a no-no. It's what I do, okay, and it works for me because how I'm animated and I tend to move around the room. And most people want you to hear. Okay, they definitely don't want this. Okay, they definitely don't want the nervous thing, they don't want this. Well, it was kind of this, okay? You don't want that, don't play with the hair. <laughs> All right. If you took it, play with the hair, pull it back, okay? so. Don't jump with the pants. If you're going to, so if you were going to find out a little bit more officially how to do a presentation, you would see this. I would come here, I would point, and when I'm done, my hand would go back to my side. Okay? Still speak, still move around the room. You can still say I can even be expressive down here, but I'm not distracting you. Okay? When I'm done with my hand. Alright? So, do practice presentations in front of a mirror before you even get to your group and see how you do, look, see if your eyes are presented, see if you have good posture, see if everything's all tucked in, okay, practice pulling your hair back in different ways and see what's going to work best because you're trying to give the best example you can. So go ahead and do that and then present in front of your group and by all means, who's heard of the expression what goes around comes around? Okay, if you're getting ready to give a presentation to your friends, to your peers, those peers better be nice to you. Not only because it helps you, but at some point in time they have to present too. And what goes around comes around. They're not so good to you, you might not be so good to them. 
So instead, encourage each other, make each other better as presenters, because again, you got panelists coming in. All right? And there might even be a grade on the line. I don't know. You want to best represent your solutions to that panel. Questions? Two more things if you could point out. What about um, two things that we've run into in previous years? Um, one is that because it's a group presentation, what if one person steps in and interrupts their group members while they're presenting all the time? How does that usually come off? It comes off as a couple of different ways. One, some, some people in the audience will think it's flat out rude. All right? So if you interrupt somebody else, then the people in the audience can be like, ah, they're rude. And by the way, if they're cutting off their own teammates, they're probably going to cut off me. So when I start presenting my ideas or my concerns about the design, they may not really pay attention to it. So instead, let your team member finish what they have to say and then offer up either an alternative or additional information that supports your teammate. Get all your distractions and disagreements out of the way off the floor. When you're here, you're a team. Even if you disagree with something they say right then, you might want to clarify it, but if it's not going to be that bad, let it pass. You can talk to your teammate once you get off the, the stage or, or whatever that may be. Okay? And the other one is, what about the projection of their voice? We have some people, they get nervous. So, when it comes to nervous, and, and now, when you first present, you're going to get up here and you're going to have your voice you're probably going to quiver a little bit. Okay, so we can talk. How many people have been singers, vocalists at some point, singing the choir? Okay, you did all kinds of breathing exercises, didn't you? Okay. And where do they tell you to sing from? They tell you to sing from here? No. Where do they tell you to sing from? Yes. You need to use that diaphragm, okay? Here's what I did. When I first did presentations, I was nervous. Now, I do a lot of teaching. Okay, a lot of teaching, a lot of coaching, a lot of yelling. And that's actually what helps me, and that's why I get away with my hand motions and all that, because I'm a coach. Okay, when I'm a coach, I can yell at you. And when I yell at you out there on the field, because i got to project my voice, by the way, it's never a bad yell, I'm just <laughs> yelling positive things. But because I'm so used to projecting my voice, I get in here and it's a lot easier to do the same thing. Okay, so you can even practice that by having everybody get way back in the back and practice. If you feel nervous, if you feel that little tremor in your voice, try to breathe out even more. Okay? Don't hyperventilate. <laughs> okay? We don't want to do that. But, make sure you take deep breaths. Do not say a lot of ups. Okay? Um, I did this, and uh, then my team did this, and uh, when you're done with this, uh, that. Okay? No ups. Here's the thing. Silence is golden. Instead of saying uh, don't say anything. Wait, compose your thoughts, and then say it. So if you're getting ready to say, uh, and you can almost feel it coming out, uh, or like, or any of those things like that, pause, and then start speaking again. Okay, the pause is okay. In fact, the pause allows everybody out there to digest the information a little bit more. Yes, sir? Oh, once my dad was on a meeting, all the way to this one place, and he was talking about speakers so we could hear the, all the guys talking, and this one guy, I talked and I can believe that. Okay, a lot of people say, uh, a lot of people haven't been taught how to get away from that. And really, the best way to get away from that uh, is to say nothing at all. Okay, give a pause. Now, I did want to point out, and I'll come to your question in a second. I did want to point out another thing. What have I done as I pointed out the person I wanted to hear speak? What have I said? How have I acknowledged you? Okay. Right, but when I wanted to hear yours, I said, yes ma'am. You like looked into their eyes. I looked into their eyes, I engaged, but I was also courteous from the fact, yes sir. And you said like, yes sir. Exactly. Yes, you, hey you. Okay, hey you son, we're here to respect. Okay, so by the way, if you get used to just in the class itself saying yes sir, yes ma'am, doesn't matter the age or anything else. This is something I had to learn early. When I was a kid, I'm like, you know what, I can respect you without saying yes sir, yes ma'am. You know what, that's just being private. Okay, you will never go wrong by saying yes sir, yes ma'am, no sir, no ma'am. So when you point to somebody in the crowd and say yes ma'am, then you're acknowledging them and you're being respectful. 
Do you have any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, what would happen if, like, like you were assigned to pods and then, like, you just took him to his pod? Okay, well don't stomp off the stage. You still have to be a good sport there. Just because somebody else on your team isn't necessarily well, the like, best teammate. Well, all your thoughts that were in your everyone had everything written down. Well, here's the deal. The people out in the crowd may not know that. <coughs> but they will know they will guess who the bad sport is if you're the one that goes stomping off the stage. So if your person takes your part, you may be as frustrated as all get out, but you need to smile and bear it, and then you can talk about that when you get off, and come next presentation, you'll get that squared away. But if you go stomping off, maybe the person who took all your parts might have sounded like a superstar. So if you're the one who goes stomping off, all that those investors, all that those important people think of is, who's the kid that went stomping off? You'll be the one they remember badly. Okay? So just handle it gracefully, and then you can handle it when you get off the stage. Kind of on that same note, you guys are presenting as a team. So what happens if I'm on a team with Mr. Vickery, and he's presenting, and I'm doing this? Uh, Ruth, what do you think the panel members, am I going to be helping my team? No. But I'm not saying anything, though. All right, so I might be taking the panel members who I'm trying to get my information across to, which he's doing a wonderful job doing, but what am I doing? Am I helping my team or hurting my team? Hurting my team. Hurting my team. So, well, even though it's not your turn to speak, you need to also be aware of what you are doing. Which brings up a good point. There's a couple of different types of converse, uh, communication. There is verbal communication and nonverbal. Nonverbal communication, okay? Nonverbal communication, like what she just exhibited, not good. Distract, distraction routine, distraction the concept you're trying to do. She's just playing around. And, and nobody's going to take either her serious or the people that's presenting serious. You're like, well, if she can't even pay attention to it, why should I? Okay. Now, another thing. What? Give me another example of a nonverbal communication. Yes. A nonverbal one is kind of just standing there and just playing your time. Yes. Because again, it's distracting. Okay. Now, getting back to what she was doing earlier. She should actually be looking, either panning the audience, looking for opportunities if somebody has a question so, so she can bring attention to the question, or looking at me or the presentation itself, depending on where she is. Okay, So she is showing attentiveness, so she is leading by example that you need to be attentive to what I have to say as well. Yes, ma'am? Like, so if she's standing like in the back, maybe, then she'll probably be looking at the presentation? Yes. And that's good, because again, just with her eyes being drawn to it, everybody will want to subconsciously model what she is doing, okay? And she's paying attention to the presentation. Yes, ma'am? Um, what is, like, somebody like the last one that's being like, 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 If they laugh, sometimes that's a good thing, okay? It can lighten like, up the entire room. Like, if they're making fun of you, here's the thing. So a lot of times people call those trolls, okay? So you're going to have hecklers or trolls that are out in the audience that are just there to knock you down if you text, okay? In most cases, you need to not give that wings, all right? So you, don't, you do not draw attention to them because that's what they want, all right? Still reference the people that are in the room. If that person becomes even more and more of a distraction, ask this person over here a question, okay? Get the audience's attention back even on somebody else in the audience, okay? Because if you keep just trying to over-talk the troll, it doesn't necessarily work. And if they keep laughing, hopefully somebody will actually escort them from Billy. Yes, ma'am? What if um, you're standing up there and um, you're speaking, and then you just kind of like your partner goes, hey, hey, she has a question, like in the middle of your... That's actually a good thing, just not necessarily those words. So, you know, it's funny because we actually taught our kids different nonverbal communications in which they'd actually set a hand. Alright? So they wouldn't come up and interrupt the conversation, they'd set a hand there. By us setting our hand on top of that, we acknowledged they had something. And then when we reached the pause, we're like, what is it that you 
had to say. And you know, like, uh, so and so in the back had a question. And then you can address that. Okay, so interruptions never still a good thing. Find that pause to be able to do that. Yeah, so there's always ways to, if you're speaking and let's say, I see that Trevor has a question. Maybe I would start to move over here. I would catch his attention and just kind of still standing, paying attention to him, but then it would direct his attention to me to see that he has a question. Where I'm not causing a whole scene, but I just took a couple steps this way. And she changed my line of sight. So now I noticed her movement. I looked along where my teammate was, I saw that person's hand raised. When I reach a pause, when I complete whatever thought it was I had at the time, now I can ask that question in the book. While he's asking the question, I can come back over here and still be looking out at the audience to see if there's anybody else. Sir? How is the panel supposed to acknowledge us if they have a question? There's going to be a question and answer time at the end, so they're not going to be able to interrupt in the middle of your presentation. There's going to be a question and answer time. So we have a set five, ten minutes for them to ask questions to you guys. Now, I will put a caveat, a little exception in there. It's good that they're doing that. It's good since you're just now learning how to present that all questions and answers are held to the end. Okay, because again, some of you are going to be looking at a card. You can't afford to have your train of thought interrupted and to be able to get it back on what you meant to say and all your important facts. But as you get going at it more, like if you notice already in the presentation, I said ask questions. Okay, there you're expecting a certain level of interaction with them. So you can say, please hold all questions and answers to the end of the presentation. But then if you choose to ask a question to get their input, expect feedback and just remember where you are in the presentation so you get all your points across. But will they raise their hand or will they just like to raise their hand? They will, if they're good panelists, they'll raise their hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they'll raise your hand, their hands so you'll have time to acknowledge. And you can even tell them that. Again, you set the rules of engagement when you give a presentation. So you can say, please hold all questions to the end of the session. I would love to take your questions. If you would, please raise your hand and we'll acknowledge you. And the panel members will all have your presentation in front of them. So if they have a question and they're scared they're going to forget, because they might be nervous being panel members, they can jot it down. So that way when it comes to question and answer time, they have that for you. Okay, ma'am. What if the guy, a woman that's just like, a, that's just being mean to you, is raising your, is raising their hand and trying to get and when you go over and ask and say yes ma'am or yes no, and they're trying to say, why isn't there going to be peace at the end? Aren't they going to try and get you off topic? A lot of them will. Again, these, these trolls, these hecklers will find ways to do that. But here's the deal. Whether you're in a room giving a presentation, or you're out on the sports field of some kind, or if you're even around the dinner table, if you escalate by confronting, then what happens? That person escalates. And then that person escalates. And then you've lost the entire audience, and you've lost the reason for your presentation. So instead, do not, that's why the expression is called, do not be the trolls. Right? If somebody's doing that, then focus here. And oh, by the way, if the troll keeps behaving that way, then everybody in the room will acknowledge how graceful you're accepting it, and they'll eventually just start ignoring the troll as well. And for the panel members we're bringing in this year, they know, especially for the first one, that it's your first time presenting. So they're not going to be there trying to get you off track. They want to, they may question to get more information from you, but their purpose is not to sidetrack you. And I'll even add two other things to that, okay? One, never, it is, first of all, it is okay to say, I do not know that answer, okay? And in fact, if you do not know the answer, you can turn to the rest of your team and say, uh, did you know that answer? It's like, my, my teammate knows a little bit more about this aspect of the project, and you can ask that question. If none of your team knows the answer, that is okay. It's like, you know what, that is a very good point. We'll research it, we'll get back with you. If you leave your contact information, we'll get back with you with an answer. Okay, so you can do that. What you never, ever, ever, ever do, make up information. Okay, you do not want to get caught in a lie, ever, on anything. Okay, so do not make up information. Know that it is okay to not know every answer. Yes, ma'am? So, what if you tell them, like, we'll take questions at the end, but what if 
when you're in the middle of uh, talking, do you look out a question? Uh, well, it just depends on where you are and how comfortable you are in the presentation. The easiest way to do it, if you've established rules of engagement that the question should be at the end and you've learned out a question, you can be like, I've got some actual questions, sir. Can you please make note of that? We'll get back to you at the end of the presentation. Okay, during the question and answer session. Okay, so you've acknowledged them, all right? So you've engaged them, but you've also deferred it to the appropriate time to answer the question. Okay? As you get more comfortable with it, you may go ahead and answer the question right then if it's a simple one. But again, remember, if that guy did it, the next 500 people may do that. And you'll get so far off topic, you won't be able to finish getting your ideas across. Okay? Uh, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Um, can you, like, raise your, like, your, your hand? Because, like, if someone's talking, can you, like, raise your hand and ask them a question? Mm -hmm. You mean, if so, for example, if she's my team member, if she, in the middle of the presentation, chooses to raise her hand? Mm -hmm. And she wanted to ask you like, a question like, how, how did you do that? Or how did you do that? Work it out amongst your team beforehand. That's a very good question, by the way. By the way, when I did that, I acknowledged it was a good question. That's always good to do with the people that you're talking to. But uh, if, if she does that, and that's how you establish it beforehand, you can do this and say, okay, I'll, I've acknowledged you, I'll, I'll let you add it. And, and so I can finish what I'm saying. It's like, did you have something you wanted to clarify? And then they can speak. Okay, so, so that's perfectly okay. Probably not on the first time. But the first time right now, your team members probably ought to wait until their designated time in that presentation and do their own shining and let you shine for your part. But if a teammate stumbles completely, okay, and maybe that teammate can kind of encourage them or give them a little prompt. It's just like the person that's behind the curtain during a play or whatever, shouting out the line. Okay, so they can hear. Yeah. So if you need to prompt them, it's like, you don't have to talk about that. Okay, don't wait for so long that you can hear it. Remember, you guys are on the same team. Okay? You guys are all trying to do the same thing. So you have to work together. That's why we stress so much. You have to work together. So if there's something that he forgot, when it's my turn to speak, maybe I might add in something. Not say, oh, he forgot to tell you this. Would that be the best thing to do? No. So maybe I go about my speech, what part I have to, and then add a few of those points. And you will get smoother as you go. Okay? Presentations can be a lot of fun. It can be engaging. It can be energetic. You can walk out of here invigorated. Okay, with what you presented. Getting your ideas across and knowing by looking at the eyes and the questions and all that that they've understood. Okay, so you truly communicate. You're not just shout up in the rooftop, you communicate with your ideas. It's a very good feeling. Yes, sir. What's the invigorated mean? Invigorated just means energized, getting excited, getting pumped up. Okay? So when you convey your ideas across and you know that somebody actually understood your ideas, you're excited. You communicate. Yes, sir. Like, if someone um, forgets, like, they're supposed to go on, like, then what would you do? Like, would you tap them on the shoulder to go on, or...? Um, again, generally, you could, if, if you're close enough right here, and, and they think they completed, you could, you could actually prompt them, like, did you want to go ahead and mention this at this time? Okay? And, you know, because the audience might say, oh, they're going to mention that, they're going to talk about it later. But you can be like, oh, that's right. So I'd like to talk to you about, and then you can continue. Okay, it's another way of prompting, but not prompting by saying, you forgot that. <laughs> All right, so, so don't do that. Be calm about it. Now, one thing I also need to point out, uh, and a lot of times I do this sometimes. This watch, the clock back there, you need to be, so you're dealing with business leaders. All right? And these business leaders got to be business leaders because they're leading Businesses, all right, which means they have some place to go at the end. You need to be respectful of their time. If you have investors that you're trying to get money out of, okay, and they had 45 minutes to spend with you, and you just kept them for two hours, they don't like you much because you just set their entire schedule back, all right. So be respectful of their time. It's good to know what your time slot is. Which, by the way, I'm saying this because I was poor at it this time. I do not know what my deadline is. I've continued taking questions. Even if you have an engaged question and answer period, you still need to dismiss the room on time. Now, if you choose to stay back and answer additional questions, 
with people coming up and talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, that's perfectly okay. But you need to be respectful of everybody else's time, including your team, and allow them to leave when the designated time is. Yes, sir? What if, what if um, your phone rings in your pocket? Oh, that is an excellent question. What should you be doing with all the electronic devices before not a presentation? Do not have them on you or off or vibrate or whatever. And when giving the presentation, it even shows a certain level of maturity if you ask your audience to do the same. It's like we want to be respectful of the time. We have a lot of ideas that we want to get across to you. If you could please respect the presenters by moving your phones to silent or turning them off. Okay. That shows maturity, actually. Good question. And a lot of times we'll have done that for you so you don't have to start your presentation. Usually, because I know you'll be nervous the first time, we'll usually have prepped the panel members to say, hey, can you just remember to turn your cell phones off or put on silent? Okay. So don't worry. There will there'll be a little bit of leeway for you guys. Okay. And how are we doing on time? Is that we are good. We're good on time? We're good on time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir. And that's where you get to the point to where you answer the questions that you can to still get to the time limit that you have and then thank the audience, say thank you for being a very engaged audience, for really conveying our ideas to you. We will be up at the front of the room for additional questions, but at this time we'd like to dismiss the panel. Okay? So there again, you're respecting the people, but you're also sticking around to provide that information. Yes, ma'am? Um, it's it's interesting because at all times when a person asks a question, even if a person is going to eventually turn into like the troll that, that she mentioned over there, you still want to acknowledge with respect. You'll be like, and you can even say, you know what, that's a very intriguing question. Perhaps we could talk about it after this session, so it's slightly off topic of what is in here. Okay? So you're still acknowledging them, you're being polite, you're, you're still saying, your opinion matters to me. But right now, let's take care of the broad audience question around this topic. Okay? Are we done? Yes, ma'am? For your, for when you present to the panel, we are going to have a set time for you to present, and you'll practice it so you can make sure your presentation fits in that time frame. Okay. Then we will be either Mr. H or myself will be leading that group, or we have one other person who's going to lead because we're going to have three panels, um, and they're going to be kind of leading it. So when you get to a point where you've gone your, let's say, 10 minutes of presenting or five minutes of presenting, we will say we're entering our question and answer time. So we will stop your presentation so you guys don't have to worry about trying to keep track of time and everything else. That's our job. And we will also give the panel members time to ask their questions. Again, if they have more questions than we have time for, we'll make sure to end the questions for that. Right. And if there's this, knowing that you may have had such an energized crowd that even if you dismiss it, everybody just lines up to ask questions one-on-one. -on -one. So you want to give them alternatives to reach you with their questions. Now, in this case, you're not going to be giving the personal information, you're going to be giving the teacher's information or the schools. All right? But you want to give them other avenues to reach out to you. Because again, you're all about communicating your ideas. All right, so you want to get as many communication channels here as you're comfortable with support. Yes, sir. What do you do if you have like a group of three and you each memorize one part of it and one person is sick or something? So we can't do it. That is an excellent right. topic as well. So really, the group of three is a team, right? And so that team needs to be doing a great job understanding the depth of the entire project. All right. Now, it's still okay for you to only summarize. Perhaps your team member is going into greater detail. It's still okay because, again, we never make anything up, right? We, we never just fabricate something, create it from scratch. So instead, you'd be like, for this portion of the presentation, I'd like to summarize some of the things we hope to talk to you about. I'm sorry, but one of the team members is sick. I want to convey these ideas to you. If you have any other questions from my team member, we'd be happy to address that if you contact me. 
Okay, so you're basically saying, okay, I'm going to hit the highlights of what my missing team member was going to discuss, but my missing team member was the specialist in that. So if you have any other questions, we, we want to acknowledge that with the person who can best answer. Okay, but still cover the topic, right? So they know that you considered it as a team. Because if you don't cover the topic, then it might be like, hmm, they completely overlooked that. I don't know. They didn't pay attention to detail. I might take my business elsewhere. So you need to know that you tell, let people know that you at least thought about it and you've included it. It's just your best person to present it isn't there. Yes, ma'am? At the beginning of our speech, should we say our names? Absolutely, and you should say it loud and clear and proudly. Okay. Okay? Yes, ma'am? This is a question for Mrs. Um, How are we going to know when it's going to be the end? Like, the postseason comes in, if it's Mitchell Hope with you or someone else, is we'll be in the room the whole time. Are they going to do okay? Are you guys we will let you know. You are going to practice it and mm -hmm. practice it and practice it. So I can guarantee you are going to know all the different signals, okay? All the different things, okay? We're there to help you out. Okay? By the way, I'm going to add one other thing uh, that I should have before. So if she asked a question, She's, she doesn't have a microphone. Her voice may not be projecting as well as it could. This person may not hear it, but this person may be very interested in the answer to that question. So a lot of times you may end up repeating the question so that this person hears it as well. So it's like, they was just asking about what signals they can do so they'll know what point in the presentation they're in. Here's what you should do. All right, so I reiterated the question. Do you have one back there? You good? Okay. Yes, ma'am. What if you catch your... Your partner in the line, you can tell their line because you studied the exact same thing and they forgot it. Tough because, again, if you bring that person out on the line in front of an audience, you just lost all credibility as a team. So, what you may look for is an opportunity to clarify the point and actually get it straight across. And hopefully, it's not just an absolute blatant line. Okay, if so, that type of integrity needs to be addressed off the floor. Okay, not in the presentation. Yes, sir. If it's like time to go and you're like in the middle of a sentence, you just finish that sentence, then you stop? You finish the thought. Okay, so you don't just have to stop at the sentence. You can get your point across, and we can compress the time a little bit later. So it's, it's disrespectful to absolutely abuse your time staying 30 minutes long, but if you go two minutes long because you're in the middle of a thought or you're in the middle of answering a detailed question, that's okay. People will generally be forgiving of that. Yes, sir. What I was going to say is, you guys are actually going to be creating business cards. So you will, before every PBL, you will create a business card, and it'll have your contact information.